So in all of the problems that we've dealt with so far up to this point, we've been dealing with acceleration as being constant. Okay, so in the situations that we've had when we've been plotting uh, acceleration against time, what we've had is that perhaps acceleration is constant at, let's say, 4 meters per second per second, okay, for a certain amount of time. And then we could work our way with that bit of information, okay? So what we then found was that if we then looked at uh, velocity, okay, then the velocity would be uh, a straight line uh, that would have of a diagonal line that would have gradient of 4, okay? So um, one key bit of information is that we wouldn't necessarily know what the initial velocity would be, but it look, we would need to know that. So for the first 10 seconds, we are, let's say we're accelerating steadily, okay? So if that's 10, then I would be able to work out what the uh, height would be, okay? So let's say we're starting at zero, and we're accelerating at four meters per second per second. So if the gradient of this line is four, then one along four up, and so we would have to reach 40 meters per second by the time we get to 10 seconds, okay? Then we saw that, okay, well, if that's our, um, our velocity, then I could then look at displacement, okay? Now, if, um, if this is then telling me um, the gradient of this line, the gradient of, well, of the gradient of the displacement is this line, okay, then I'm going to get some kind of curved motion going on, aren't I? Okay, so what's happening is that let's say I'm starting at the origin and then I am slowly increasing in velocity and then by that point, I am quite fast, aren't I, okay? So I must be uh, starting off quite slow, and then I am increasing my speed, okay? So it will have this curved uh, section. Now, in order to kind of understand what's going on here, okay, and to really get our... Uh, get our head around it, then this idea of we've worked up is that in order to really draw my diagram, I've had to have a little bit more information, okay? I had to tell you that the initial velocity was zero, for example. And I had to then tell you here that our initial displacement was zero. Uh, we're starting from the origin. Okay, so initial displacement is zero. So what you've got here are initial conditions that we had to know in order to fully realise um, what the velocity was doing and what the distance uh, displacement was doing. Okay. Now, why? Are we getting this curved graph here? Well, if we work our way back down, remember we're looking at the gradient of the displacement uh, is the velocity, okay? So, in order to get from a curved section of graph and then find the gradient, I need to use differentiation, okay? So, it doesn't take much kind of guessing that in order to go from displacement down a velocity, I'm going to have to differentiate. And subsequently, if I'm going from velocity down to acceleration, I'm finding the gradient of that line, I can then differentiate again. I've also seen that the area between the line and the x-axis, or the time axis, uh, of the acceleration represents the velocity.
okay? So the fact that it's um, 4 times 10 is getting me that final velocity. The area of this triangle, okay, will tell me the overall displacement that I've travelled. So half base times height is half of 10, so 5 times by 40, and so that would be 200 metres. Okay, and so to go back, I can integrate as the reverse process of differentiation. Okay, now this then leads into the idea of okay, well, what if the acceleration wasn't constant? Okay, what would happen then? Well, the acceleration could be a straight line going diagonal, okay? Then if I integrate that, I'm going to go from a linear equation to a quadratic one. And then when I integrate that to get to the displacement, I'm going to get a cubic result, okay? So you can see how we can go from linear to quadratic to cubic. Um, if this was a quadratic, then I would go to a cubic, which would then go to a cortic. Okay, so now you can kind of start to see that actually, if I give my uh, acceleration as a function of time, then I should be able to work my way up or down the board, depending on where I'm starting with, right? Where I'm starting. So here, we've got this A equals 4, okay? So then when I integrate, I get the velocity is 4t plus some constant c, okay? Now, because I've got that initial condition saying that the initial velocity is zero, when t is zero, v is zero, and so c will be zero, okay? Depending on the initial conditions, that will change. Once I've got that, I can then integrate up to the displacement which will be 2t squared plus another constant. And if I'm told that the initial displacement is 0, then when t is 0, s is 0. And so k must be 0. OK? So it's all starting to come together. And as I said, if we can now uh, change the acceleration to something that isn't constant. So let's say it's 4t instead of just 4. Then when I get to the velocity, I'm going to integrate this. So I'm going to get 2t squared plus c. Substitute in the initial condition of the initial velocity. So when t is 0, v is 0, and so c is 0. So v is equal to just 2t squared. Then I can integrate up to the displacement. So integrating that, I get 2 thirds t cubed plus another constant. I know the initial displacement is 0. So when t is 0, s is 0. And so that means k is 0. And so I can write down an equation for the displacement given the conditions that I've had in the question. So calculus in kinematics is really the extension of what we've been doing with the cost acceleration formulae, but now we can just express these uh, functions in terms of t, and we can integrate our way upwards from a to v to s, and then differentiate downwards s to v to a. How do you remember which way you integrate and differentiate? Age-old question that. If you remember SUVAT, S-U-V-A-T, okay, you notice that S, V and A here are appearing in the same order. So differentiate, differentiate your way down the list and integrate your way up the list.